and properly so, that it is connected with the reign of Kefron's brother Cheops, or Khufu. The size of the Great Pyramid is legendary, enough stone to build a sidewalk clear around the world, or pave a highway from New York City to Chicago, or to construct 20 Empire State Buildings. The core of the Great Pyramid contains over 2 million stones, averaging 5,000 pounds apiece. Originally, it was overlaid with an additional 120,000 limestone blocks. These highly polished stones shimmered under the desert sun. Thus, the pyramid remained in its dazzling perfection for some 30 centuries, until Arab sultans in the 13th century pillaged the shining outer casing stones for the mosques and bridges of Cairo. Strong mortar filled the tiny joints, only one fiftieth of an inch separating each casing block. Ferguson, in his History of Architecture, exclaims, nothing more perfect mechanically has ever been erected. The light of day never penetrates the inner passages of the Great Pyramid to illuminate the unique interior and the wonders of the structure. The entrance was known to only a few in Roman times, a hinged stone door concealed it so effectively that when its location was forgotten, no one could find it for centuries. The Caliph, Al-Mamun, looked for the entrance in A.D. 830. He searched the perfectly smooth exterior for any cracks that might reveal a door. Not finding one, he began tunneling where tradition said it should be somewhere on the north face. For three months, his men labored. Little did they suspect that the real door was only 35 feet above them. As they bored through the stone, they began to doubt. Would they ever reach a passage? Suddenly, the men heard a muffled thud within the building. They tunneled toward the sound. They broke into a steep, dark passage descending below ground. Torches in hand, they ventured down into this eerie passage that had been abandoned for centuries. As they reached its end, the passage leveled out opening into a large room. A royal burial chamber? No, an unfinished dead end called the pit. Still confident of vast hidden treasure, they returned up the tortuous passageway seeking clues along the way. When they arrived near the point of entry, they noticed the large angular stone which earlier they had heard drop. Looking up, they saw revealed for the first time a huge granite plug. Try as they would, al Mamun's men could not remove it. So they tunneled around the 15-ton obstruction. Another long, low passage stretched upward before them. Since it didn't have the cleats and handrails that helped modern tourists, they had to clamber on hands and knees up this cramped, slippery grade. At last they emerged. Before them, a remarkable sight. Continuing upward, a lofty hallway some 28 feet high, a grand gallery. Tunneling below this horizontally was another cramped passageway leading to a large empty room, the Queen's Chamber. They progressed upward along the Grand Gallery, ascending into the dark beyond the reach of their glowing torches. Faint shadows flickered on the lofty ceiling, and still the men climbed. At the top, a great step. A low stoop into an antechamber. Another low passage, and then the King's Chamber. But it was empty. To the right was what looked just like a coffin. At last, the treasure. They rushed to the coffin, only to find it empty. Continuing their search, still another passage caught the Arabs' attention. Near the lower end of the Grand Gallery, 